Hello everyone, David here. If you've seen my channel before, you might know that I really like this console, the Nintendo 3DS. This is the new model, but it was released some 10 years ago now, and is getting a bit long in the tooth. There are a few features that you'd expect on modern devices that it simply doesn't have. So I got in touch with a hardware modder and asked him to change that. If we flip this around, you'll notice that the proprietary 3DS charging port has been replaced with a wonderfully compatible USB-C connection. And there is a switch and button and LED back here for controlling Bluetooth audio. And coupled with soft modding, which lets me keep my full library of games on the device, along with a bunch of emulators and other utilities, I feel like I've brought this nifty little thing up to date. Let me tell you how it all happened. It started when I found this post on Reddit detailing a Bluetooth mod, and I realized that it would make the console a lot better. I mean, sure, it has a headphone jack, so you can play with wired earphones. But honestly, I prefer using my AirPods. They're so convenient with no dangling wires. And the noise cancellation is great if you ever want to play on an aeroplane or anywhere noisy in public. If you do some Googling, you can find some 3DS hardware modders, and their main business is usually to fit capture cards. After some chatting on his official Discord, Stefan from Murky.net agreed to make the necessary changes for me, and so our adventure started. I think he might not have taken the work if he'd known how involved it was going to get, but I'm really glad he did, because we ended up with something great. We went with the same Bluetooth chip as the original modder, and Stefan even found a place to draw power from the motherboard that would cut off when the device is put into sleep mode. Now there is a switch to turn on and off power to the Bluetooth chip, uh, but ideally you want it to cut off automatically when put to sleep as well, otherwise it would keep drawing power until the battery was completely dead, which would be annoying as you'd have to recharge your device and reset your system clock, uh, but it could conceivably damage your battery as well. Okay, here's a little demonstration of how the Bluetooth audio and control system works. Um, this is Zelda Triforce Heroes. Uh, with Bluetooth turned off, it's just playing out of the system speakers, as usual. So what I'm going to do is just take the control switch here and slide it over from off to on. And now the audio is being sent to Bluetooth instead. And you might be able to see that there's a little red flashing light inside there, which means that it's looking for a device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my Bluetooth device, which in this case is my uh, nice uh, Bluetooth headphones. Hold down the button for a long time so that it goes into pairing mode. There you go, it's pairing now. And then uh, this might pair straight away. It's doing a bit more flashing. And there you go, the blue light is on and I'm hearing audio through the headphones. So that's it, and then I can play the game like this and the quality really is very nice. Um, and when I'm done, I can press this button to disconnect. And then if I want to switch back to the system audio, just slide this switch back. And it's coming out of the device again. So yeah, very handy, works really well. And um, yeah, I love it. I mean, I could use a dongle all the time, but I feel like having all of this integrated means, you know, it's not another device I have to charge. Um, it's with the 3DS at all times. Um, and it's just like really compact and nice and I can, you know, still fold it up, chuck it in a bag and forget about it. It's great. Obviously, it would be nice to control Bluetooth through the system software like you might with the Nintendo Switch, but that would require a drastic mod of the whole OS in software and is a much bigger task. There is a little bit of lag depending on the receiving device you're using, but it's usually not bad enough to impact gameplay and you know, I'm not doing any competitive eSports online with this thing. The USB-C port is actually a kit that you can find online to replace the proprietary charging port. You have to cut out part of the chassis to accommodate the extra width of USB-C, but it's also thinner, which leaves a gap. Fortunately, the kit comes with a spacer that can plug that gap. You can tell it's obviously not part of the original casing, but I don't mind. 
Uh, and what's nice is that it seems to work with every USB-C charger I've tried so far, not just USB-A to C cables, as some mods are limited to. And I can't overstate how wonderful it is to have USB-C charging. Now I can chuck my 3DS in my bag and use the same charger I'd use for my phone, camera, and nearly all my other devices. You'll notice that the contacts for charging via a dock are still present and still work when a connection is made. Unfortunately, it no longer fits in the official dock for the new 3DS XL, as the switch and button protrude just enough to prevent the charging pins connecting when it's seated in the dock. There are cutouts for the shoulder buttons, and it's a tight fit. I could take a Stanley knife to the dock itself, but they're becoming quite rare now, so I want to keep mine unmodified. Instead, I bought one of these third-party docks, which are quite cheap, about 10 to 15 pounds, and have the bonus of working with both standard and XL models. I have to line up the contacts myself rather than just chucking it in the perfectly sized XL dock, but um, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make, I suppose. By the way, I did see someone who had made a wireless charging mod for the 3DS too, and that would be nice to have in a perfect world, but it's getting a bit cluttered inside my case now, so that would probably be very difficult to add. Uh, if you somehow manage it, please leave a comment below this video and tell me how you did it. So that's the hardware side done. I also soft modded the console myself, and this brings along a few other advantages. You can override any region locks and get games from any part of the world. You can use Homebrew for some very handy utilities like Checkpoint, which lets you back up and restore your saved games. And this was actually really handy while I sent the console off. I copied my save to another 3DS and continued my Majora's Mask progress from there, then copied it back when I got this one back. You can even restore your save to a real cartridge and play on an unmodded 3DS if you want. There are some great emulators, and probably my favourite setup is to play Snatcher, the Mega CD game, running on RetroArch. I'm Gillian Seed. I've been assigned to Junker Headquarters effective today. Oh, you're Mr. Seed. Please forgive me. A fairly recent development is Red Viper, so you can finally play Virtual Boy games with stereoscopic support. I've always thought the 3DS would be the perfect platform for this, and I'm looking forward to trying some Wario Land. I never played any Virtual Boy games back in the day, and it didn't even come out in the UK or Europe at all. Finally, you'll notice I have a lot of games installed on my home screen. This is mostly because I bought a lot of them on the eShop while it was still active, but I've also dumped a few of my physical cartridges and installed them here for convenience. It's not too hard to do if you've already soft-modded your system. First, you power it off and then insert the cartridge you want to dump and start it up again while holding down the start button. Then you go to C, Game Cart, press A on the file with trim.3ds on it, and then go to NCSD image options and finally choose build CIA from file. You can then use FBI to install that to your home screen and you no longer need the physical cartridge. So doing all this breathes new life into the console, at least for me. I mean, is the Steam Deck or ROG Ally a more practical choice for playing modern games? And with all the bells and whistles like Bluetooth, not to mention external monitor and controller support? Absolutely. Uh, and I will still use my Ally when traveling. But there is something nice about this little thing. It's just so much more convenient and pocketable. And it has that Nintendo charm. There's a certain joy to using it that I just don't get from playing Honkai Star Rail on my phone. Obviously, your mileage may vary, but if you're interested in getting a 3DS like this one, you either have some intense micro-soldering to do, or I recommend you get in touch with Stefan and get a quote from him. You at least have the benefit that he's done this mod before. I'd like to say thank you to Stefan for doing such a professional job with the modding. The machining out on the back and soldering internally all looks really clean. You're probably wondering how much I paid for all this, and honestly, it was not cheap. In total, it was 311 euros, which is about 265 British pounds, or 335 US dollars. Broken down as 107 euros for the USB-C mod, 180 for the Bluetooth mod, and 24 for return shipping and customs charges. Stefan may change his prices though, so I recommend you contact him if you want to make a similar order. So that's it, my 3DS for 2024. What do you think? Does it bring it up to date? You know, it's crazy thinking that even the Switch didn't launch with Bluetooth audio support, and they were quite lucky to be able to patch it in via a software update. And even now, 
It runs with some limitations. It's really nice not having to worry about carting around the highly specific 3DS charging cable or wired headphones just for this. Basically, it kind of fits into my family of devices very naturally now. Have you done any similar mods? I'd love to know about them in the comments section below. Well, that's it. If this video was informative or at least entertaining on some level, leave me a like and you can help me out by subscribing to my channel as well. Okay, see you next time.